Hi everyone, my name is Angela and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to have a bit of a bookish chat. I've got some current reads that I'm reading which are really great and I'm also going to share with you some of my favourite locations to get book recommendations. It's a pretty gloomy day here and to be honest it's been pretty after I think I shared with you that March and April when we had no rain and we've had just a deluge of rain over the last uh, weekend if not week and a bit and so over the weekend we had a thunderstorm but it's still not cold it's still not wintry weather from the first of June it's considered to be winter in Australia I think most other places go by the solstice you know the winter solstice was which is in a couple of weeks still we're technically in winter and I feel like uh, the weather a, a switch was flipped the minute we went into June into the first of June it's been very wet here I've been spending my weekend uh, with family. I had my stepson, my stepdaughter were here and my son-in-law and my grandson. So I had a full house over a couple of nights on the weekend. And it was also a long weekend here. So we had the Monday um, as a public holiday. Somewhere along the way, I feel like I've caught a cold as well. So I've kind of been gentler with myself. I haven't been perhaps doing all the things that I was hoping to get done in a long weekend. But Instead, I have been reading and drinking lots of tea and eating a lot of shortbread. And I made um, a soup, which whenever I feel an inkling of getting sick, I now make this particular soup. It's from a kitchen in France from Mimi Thorison, and it's a garlic soup. Uh, I, I really do believe there is something behind chicken soup. It is a real penicillin for colds and boosting immunity. But you don't always have all the ingredients for a chicken soup. You know, you need a mirepoix, you need uh, carrots and celery and actual chicken. Um, whereas I always have some chicken bones in the freezer. I will always have some chicken broth. Maybe even I've already made the chicken broth and I've got it in the freezer itself. And the other ingredients is an onion and a head of garlic. And it is so nourishing and so perfect for when you're not feeling great. So it's this beautiful garlic soup uh, the recipe does kind of dress it up a little bit like you add an egg into it to get a little bit of texture I just varied it where I just stripped it down to the bare basics so it's chicken broth which I made and then sweat down an onion and a head of garlic and it is delicious and I feel it just running through my veins hopefully hopefully uh, boosting my immunity so I, this is as bad as my cold is going to get. So that's I definitely recommend that little uh, recipe in there if you're feeling under the weather. It's a great thing to have. And when I do make it, I try and make enough that I can freeze some. So I always have a little bit in the freezer because uh, sometimes when you're not well, no one else is going to make me garlic soup, but I'll make it for other people if they're unwell. So uh, it is nice to have some there just in case, just in case you need it. But let's get into some of my current reads at the moment. Uh, the first one is I'm going through Autumn Chills from Agatha Christie. This is a selection of short stories all set around that autumnal period and I'm really enjoying this one. I'm enjoying this more than the last collection I read which was the summer one and this is really lovely. I'm enjoying it and it's not all murder mysteries. There's actual like just mysteries. The second story is like a woman who has been, her body has been swapped with someone else. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's really, really, really good. So that's one that I've got on the go at the moment. And I'm, I need to finish it because we're now in winter and I need to start reading the winter one. I also have The House at Pooh Corner on the go, which is the second of this particular series. I read the first one a couple of months ago. And this is when we get introduced to Tigger. Uh, but it's just such a lovely little book and it's quite perfect for the colder months because it opens up in winter uh, with poo traipsing through the snow and uh, so it is really lovely. <laughs> I mean it's just so nostalgic isn't it? And they're going through the hundred acre wood and it's all snowy and cold and Pooh just wants to sit by a fire and eat which I get poo, I get. So I'm, I'm really enjoying this one. I'm really savouring it. I do have the next one here ready when I do finish it. I've also got the trackers on the go. I'm about a quarter of the way through this one at the moment. I'm enjoying it. It's not super fast paced, but slowly we're getting to learn all of the characters and a little bit of a backstory of all of them. And it's quite, quite interesting so far. I think it's just starting to ramp up. It's giving like real Yellowstone kind of vibes. You know, you've got this people that are living on a ranch and it's and it's almost its own community you know they've got a history uh, with each other so I'm enjoying that one 
Another one I have on the go at the moment was a recent purchase and it's The Palace by Gareth Russell. And this is all about the history of Hampton Court. Uh, it's about 500 years of its history that it goes through and it goes from the Tudors through to the Windsors. It's really quite fascinating. Uh, I really do love also that at the start of this book, it has little family trees of each of the monarchs that lived there. So it starts off with um, the Tudor family tree and then it goes into the Stuart family tree, the Hanovers and then the Windsors. And it's really very handy, really detailed. It's a very fast paced book. I really am enjoying it. It's perfect for this time of the year to read a bit of a doorstop history book. So I'm enjoying that one. And then the last one I've got on the go at the moment is The Dictionary People from Sarah Ogilvie. And it's all about the people that wrote the Oxford English Dictionary. I love history. I, I love learning how things came to be. Uh, like, for example, in the palace, there's a little footnote about how the phrase Peeping Tom came about. Oh, I love that stuff. So anyway, the dictionary people uh, is all about the, the people that made the dictionary or, you know, created the English Oxford Dictionary. And it takes you through uh, each chapter is a letter. So it goes from A through to Z. And I think it just picks out a word uh, from the dictionary and gives you a little bit of history about it. And it's really quite fascinating. I think anyone who has a fascination of the English language um, will appreciate it. So that's another one that's just, I've just kind of started it. But there's quite a little bit of an autumnal feel still going on with my books. <laughs> this orange selection over here. But I'm really enjoying them. So let's get into some locations I like to frequent to get recommendations for my next book. So the first couple of places is a couple of YouTube series. They're not YouTubers, not booktubers, I guess. Um, but the first one is Chanel in the library from the brand Chanel. And it, I don't know how I came across this. It was a couple of years ago now. They've been a little sporadic in posting in this particular topic. And it looks like it started off as a bit of a panel discussion a couple of years ago. And then that now they've kind of flipped it around a little bit. So it's a one-on-one -on -one discussion with someone, anyone, a model, an actor, uh, a writer themselves. So I'm really enjoying it though, because it's not as superficial as you might expect from a brand like Chanel and the people that you're seeing interviewed. They have a real depth to the books that they're recommending, to the books that they're saying uh, were quite formative for them. One of my favourite episodes was with Kristen Stewart. And I'm, I'm not going to seek out interviews with Kristen Stewart. I always feel that she is so awkward and she clearly doesn't want to be doing it, having interviews. But this episode, she, uh, she's different when she's talking about books. And some of the books she recommended were really, really interesting. Uh, so there was that one and there's another um, episode that was recently, I can't recall the name of the person, uh, but I'll share both links down the bottom and I hope you check them out because they are quite interesting. Uh, some of them are in French, but there's always subtitles. So it's really, it's just for a bit of a different perspective, I think you'll find it interesting. Another surprise YouTube series that popped up is the Dior Book Tote Club. And again, you think it's just going to be... I mean, a couple of the episodes are just people wandering around with this beautiful bag, just picking up books that uh, anybody would be able to recommend because they are always at the top of, of the bestseller lists. But there are some people who are really, you can see that they love literature and they are sharing books that they really do love. And one of them was Rosamund Pike. Her particular episode was really interesting. And I mean, Rosamund Pike wandering around a bookstore in London just talking is just really relaxing. So uh, I do like that particular series and I hope they continue it. Um, the Chanel one is definitely much more for literary recommendations, whereas the, the book tote, the Dior one is a little bit more probably books that you might have heard of before. But ultimately, you can see that they are clearly people that enjoy books. They enjoy talking about books and there are some really great recommendations coming out. So I'll share a couple of links below. I think one of them was yeah, the Rosamund Pike episode and also I think her name was Nina but you could see that she has, has literature running through her veins so I'll share those two uh, episodes below. The next place that I'm getting most of my recommendations at the moment is through a podcast and that's the Slightly Foxed podcast. I've only just recently jumped on it and they have a little bit of a back catalogue. It's not huge uh, because they I think they tended to do these episodes around the time they were releasing their quarterly which is every three months. So it's not uh, like they're not doing an episode every week or every month. It's a little sporadic, 
but there is a beautiful back catalog of just conversations about books and they're very intelligent conversations some of the people that they're talking with uh, have really great insights one I listened to recently was about uh, biographies uh, about royals and just some of the insights they had around that process not to mention the actual topic was really interesting so I'm enjoying listening to that one and I get some great recommendations I've taken I'll normally listen to these when I'm driving and I've taken to having a notepad and a pencil in my car so I can write down recommendations legally. You get recommendations throughout the entire podcast, but at the end of it, there's like a three or five minute uh, section where they specifically go around the table and ask people to give recommendations on books that they're currently loving. So I highly recommend that. Uh, it is definitely a particular genre of book. You know, these are books that are perhaps no longer published or they're set definitely set in the United Kingdom, probably around the interwar years or, you know, there's definitely a genre, but I enjoy that genre. So I'm really enjoying it. And I do think I'll subscribe to their quarterly publication. I now understand enough about who they are and what they promote that I could I could invest in that and I'd probably get some really good uh, recommendations through their publication. I did, I shared with you in my recent haul video that I purchased a couple new Slightly Foxed editions and I received them just this week. The first one I got was Nella Last's War and uh, this is subtitled The Second World War Diaries of Housewife 49 and it's a really beautiful little edition. So this is one of their Slightly Foxed editions so it's one, it's a limited edition. I still don't clearly understand the difference between this and my next one, which is a plain Fox edition, which is uh, 84 Charing Cross Road. They're very similar. Like the, in terms of how they are done, I, I can't see the difference between the two. So anyway, Nella Last War uh, is, it's the diaries of a woman who was in during the Second World War. Um, I shared it with you. I shared a little bit more information about it with you then. But it's a quite a big book, actually. I was surprised because the other ones I have are much smaller. But 84 Charing Cross Road is quite famous. You know, these are actually just the letters between Helene Hamp and the owner of a bookstore on Charing Cross Road. And it's it's so it's such a lovely little addition. So now I have quite a lovely collection of slightly foxed books and I need to find a very special home for them. Uh, but if you're thinking about any of them, I recommend them. They are beautiful. Just the book binding, the paper, the font, it's a pleasurable experience to read one of these books. It does make you feel very much like a Jane Austen character reading out of your little hardback book that you can just, you know, carry around with you. Um, but I did, this one was Cider with Rosie and I do, they sent out a note saying that they're down to the last 50 or 60 of these. So if you are interested in them, highly recommend it because they do go very, very quickly. So the next location I tend to go to to get recommendation is through newsletters. And these are generally newsletters from bookstores, not individuals. So I have uh, a couple of newsletters I receive from independent bookstores in Perth, where I am, and that is the Lane Bookstore and the Open Book. And I also recently just signed up to New Edition Bookstore, which is a it's a bookstore that's been around for over 30 years in Fremantle. And the reason I like subscribing to these newsletters is because they're local independent bookstores, they quite often have books coming in through local publishers, local authors, so they'll promote those books. Uh, books that I may, I would not hear about if I went to a big bookstore. So I do enjoy it from that aspect. They usually share information about author nights coming up or book releases or book clubs, things like that. And I enjoy receiving these because I'm trying to spend less time on social media lately, which is where, you know, you might get other recommendations from people. But I find that the social media recommendations can often be the same, same. You know, it's people reading War and Peace or Emily Henry. I feel like it's, it's really either those two things. So I do enjoy these independent bookstores for that reason. And I really want to, I love going into those bookstores too. They are not close to me, all these ones. 
so it is like a half a day trip if I decide to go in there. But the new edition one is a dog friendly bookstore. So I might have to go check it out and take my pup in, take her out for an, for an outing. Another newsletter I subscribe to, which is not local, is the random pig, Penguin Random House newsletter. And but this newsletter is really, really good. Uh, so every week I think you get a you get two. One of them is the, you know, the most popular books right now or this week, and another one might be about a specific topic. So I think the newsletter this week had a topic of books to read for American Jewish Heritage Month, or it might have been about Japanese authors. Um, they've got really interesting categories it's not all just summer romance and thrillers it's like really specific categories and i've come across some really interesting authors and books that i have not heard about before so that's another really good one and i'll leave links down below to these websites where you can sign up for yourself if you're interested and the final location i like to go to to get recommendations is just to walk through a bookstore it is something that truly warms my heart, being able to just wander in without, without the pressure of thinking I'm going in to look for this particular book, uh, just to wander around and see what's out. And I don't mean going to the walls that say, you know, new releases or book talk books, that kind of thing. I mean, just wandering through and seeing what cover takes your fancy uh, and then picking it up and having a look at it. And that was how I came across The Palace. I saw it in a bookstore when I was just browsing and so I wouldn't have come across it otherwise. There was actually one of my favourite books of 2023 I found during that and that was The the Offing by Benjamin Myers and I have never seen that book talked about. It's, it's only a couple of years old and I found it by accident in a bookstore. I thought that looks interesting and it turned out to be one of my favourite books of 2023. So I really do recommend that just going in and having a window shop is quite a good way to you know, just find something that takes your fancy. So those are some recommendations of where I go to find my next book that I want to read. And I hope I hope this has given you a few other locations you might want to check out. I'd love to hear where you go to get your recommendations. It's there's so many places, but I do find that there is a lot. It's just a problem that we have these days is we have access to so much information, but at times that can just feel like noise and it's hard to find the forest for the trees. I think that's the saying. And so it is nice to be able to just really hone it in to something and not have to worry about too much of that noise around it. So please, I'd love to hear where you get your recommendations for. Is it just a best friend that you talk to regularly? Do you have a newsletter or a particular YouTuber you follow that you really love? Uh, I'd love to know about that. And I'll leave a link to my video of my top 10 books of 2023 because those were those are some great recommendations that I think you'll really love as well and of course you guys actually give me a lot of recommendations when I do these videos I share with you books that I'm really enjoying and then you give me so many more recommendations in the comments so thank you for that that's a really another good that's a good one as well but thank you so much for joining me I hope you have a lovely weekend ahead with some beautiful books and I will see you next weekend bye